Good afternoon. Uh, this is afternoon in Hong Kong. Uh, today I would like to uh, talk about the, our recent research activities about ground source heat pumps using spiral coil energy piles with seepage water at the back uh, uh, flow on the ground for air conditioning. Uh, you say ground couple, we call ground coupled heat pumps application, in fact, still developed very rapidly in China, in mainland China. So I would like to uh, introduce a new application that's called pile energy application. So today I will introduce mainly our simulation models and experiments and uh, last our software tool energy pile store. You see in China, most of the ground coupled heat pump project located in the east, especially in the northeast of China, like Beijing, Tianjin, Shandong province, the total installation capacity is more than 20 gigawatts, which is equivalent to more than 19 megatons coal equivalent. The heating and the cooling floor area, mainly heating in North China, less area in South China, more than 500 meg square meter. And some located in central of China, like Wuhan, and uh, in south of China, is very rarely, uh, uh, very limited. Like Hong Kong, we have only one big project for test and two small projects for experiments as well. Because the weather is very hot in South China, the soil temperature is hot for cooling, is the COP is very low. So this application mainly uh, used in uh, North China or Central from Shanghai, for example, Shanghai to Shenyang or to uh, Changchun area. You see, there are three main problems we have discovered in recent years. First, we have to use more land area to locate the boreholes. And then it's very expensive to drill boreholes. Usually the borehole depth is about 50 to 100 meter. In Hong Kong, for example, the picture shows we drill four boreholes in Hong Kong, very expensive. One meter costs more than one thousand Hong Kong dollar. In China, it may not China is cheap, but still also very expensive because so many boreholes, more land area, and very expensive borehole drilling costs. Another problem is a uh, unbalanced uh, soil thermal uh, energy. For example, soil we call soil thermal uh, imbalance because in summer we inject too much energy to the ground. The temperature is very high. In winter, we extract too much energy from the ground, especially in North China, then the temperature, uh, we extract too much energy from the ground. Then this chart shows- Excuse me, Professor the, Yang. There's yeah. some questions that you can, if you can please put the screen on full screen. Okay. That's yeah. better, thank you. Okay, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, you see, this figure, you see the uh, borehole wall temperature adapts until 63 meter in degree Celsius. You see, how many days? Six, seven, uh, eight days? You can see at the beginning, the ground temperature is 16 degree Celsius. And then one day, daytime until 28 degree and then late, uh, because it's not continuous uh, operation at the beginning, we call it inter intermittent operation, then the temperature still increase. If you continuously use the system, then you can see the temperature increases continuously. So which will lower the COP of the system. So this soil thermal imbalance problem is very serious. So after several years of operation, 
of most of the system, all the systems, we found that the COP is much lower than expected, than the design value. Then they have to install extra cooling coil system, uh, sorry, uh, cooling tower system uh, to add more cooling capacity for summer and winter heating capacity. So, uh, the, so there are main three problems. Then, uh, in the last 10 years, we have been working in simulating the thermal balance, the energy uh, heat transfer underground. So, at the beginning, we use uh, different kind of tubes, U-tube, W-tube, W-tube, and triple U-tube. And nowadays, we have investigated spiral heat transfer tubes inside a pile. Because if we use a pile and add the coil, spiral co uh, coil, then we don't need to drill actual boreholes so that we can save borehole drilling cost. So this is what I want to present today. Uh, traditionally, most of the simulation models focus on borehole groups. Then they assume that the same heat flux of different boreholes, for example, on the right hand side, the y x chart, in fact, is different because in the middle, the temperature is higher, and the boundary, temperature is lower. So the heat transfer in the middle is much less than the boundary heat transfer. So we cannot assume the same heat flux. Uh, then we want to develop the 3D analytical model of energy piles group with C page water adventure, adventure uh, velocity. To analyze the heat transfer energy pile group, group, not your single pile, because there are a lot of piles for one building. Here we are talking about high-rise buildings. In, in China, most of the city will have high-rise buildings, not local, not uh, houses, uh, with C page. And we want to investigate the feasibility of ground source heat pump using energy pile group with C page for different locations in China. At the beginning, we set up the model of finite solid cylindrical source model, and then finite ring coil source model, and finally finite spiral source model gradually. We have published a lot of paper in this area. So this is a infinite solid cylindrical heat source model. Uh, CETAS here represents the uh, relative uh, temperature uh, with the steady state temperature on the ground. Usually for Beijing, for example, 16 degrees uh, Celsius, and in Hong Kong, it's 23 degrees Celsius. Uh, then, I don't want to spend much time on the uh, models. Then you can see from the analytical solution, you can see for different location, of course, gradually the temperature decrease apart from, uh, uh, far, far from the uh, pile. And for different time on the right hand side of the, uh, the, uh, the chart of the right hand side, for different time, you see the temperature increases for different uh, radius of the pile. Uh, this, sorry, automatic. Okay, uh, this is a comparison between infinite and finite spiral heat source model. We found that for infinite spiral source model, the temperature, underground temperature increases continuously. And for the spiral, uh, finite spiral uh, source model, the temperature at the beginning, similar as the temperature response of the infinite spiral source model, but long time simulation application, they are different. So this we have to use. So our conclusion is that we have to take the final length effect into account. 
in consideration of the long-term operation of the ground heat exchanger. The finite spiral source model should be employed in thermal analysis of the pile ground source heat pump, uh, ground heat exchanger. So don't use an infinite spiral source model for long time simulation. Uh, this is a, a key study for a sample pile. The radius is 0 0.4 meter of the pile. And uh, you can see the height is 20, uh, 2 meter, the height of uh, the depth of the pile, 2 meter, 22 meter. And the heat change capacity of the uh, sample uh, ground heat changer is about 200 watt per meter of the depth. You can, uh, you can see the air conditioning load uh, on the left side is the air conditioning load. Uh, then uh, on the right side, you can see the, temp the wall, coil wall temperature, water entering temperature, and outlet temperature of the uh, circulated, circulated water. Uh, you, you can see in summer, the temperature is very high. In, in winter, it's very, very low. The, ever, the steady state soil temperature is about, uh, you can say, 13 or 14, 13 degrees Celsius. So that in winter and in summer, both the COP could be very low. We must be very, uh, very clear about that. And then, this is a, a simulation result of the pure conduction without groundwater advection for different, uh, different uh, depths of the pile. And then with advection, we add, you see in a finite difference model, we, we add on the left hand side is the second uh, element, we add uh, water advection heat transfer. Although the velocity is very, very slow, we have very clear effect. You can see on the heat transfer. This is isothermals of one and one row spiral heat source. Uh, on the left hand, water flows from the left hand to the right hand. Then you can see on the left hand side, the temperature is low. On the right hand side, the temperature is high on the ground so that more heat transfer uh, on left hand and less heat transfer on the right hand. You, see, you can say number one wall, a borehole, uh, no, tile, not a borehole. Number one, number 10, behind. So this has great effect on the heat transfer. Usually, uh, most of the publications, we don't have such uh, consideration. But I think now we found that we must consider this effect. You can see very, very serious effect uh, due to the advection. Uh, you can see on the chart, this is a dimensionless temperature difference uh, of the ground, if a temperature response on the, uh, in the ground soil. The red one curve represents number 10 borehole uh, uh, pile uh, temperature response, very high temperature, and the black one represents number one. This means because uh, water flow from the left hand side. So the conclusion is that water advection effect must be considered for simulation uh, analysis of ground, uh, pile ground heat exchanger, not just pile. Uh, even borehole heat transfer. This is a template response with time and velocity for different, uh, you can say, for different velocity. These are not uh, absolute velocity, it's a dimensional water flow velocity on the right hand and left hand with time, the template response with time. So you can see higher velocity on the ground and uh, of course, less temperature, uh, lower temperature. Lower temperature means higher COP of the whole system, more heat transfer. Uh, and then we did some experiment to verif uh, verify our simulation. This is uh, one of the actual project 
uh, in Shandong, Shandong province. The thermal conductivity of soil is about 1.3 watt per meter per degree Celsius. The heat capacity 1.9, uh, and then initial temperature 15 degrees Celsius in that area, steady state uh, temperature on the ground. Then you can see that the depth of the pile is 27 meter, and we did we use two piles, uh, energy piles to do the experiment. First, we turn on the uh, only one we use only one pile, then. We use only one electric heater to simulate uh, the uh, heat pump above ground. Electric heater, that means we reject energy into the ground in summer. And then we, in, we add another test two equipment, electric heater, so that we have more powerful uh, electric heater. It means uh, a large air conditioning system, so that we use two piles for the test. And then we validate our simulation and uh, then we record the temperature uh, increase with time and then the flow rate of circulating uh, liquid and uh, the heating power consumption and the heat transfer rate. Of course, all the parameters can be found. So, for example, the heat transfer rate, uh, according to the we found uh, according to the temperature and the flow rate, and another one is according to the electric heater heating power, similar, and so that our uh, simulation can be validated. And this is um, uh, we use two the test two uh, for the for using the two energy piles more powerful, and so that we can validate our simulations. This is a, compar a comparison between the mathematical model result and the experimental fun findings. Uh, you see the comparison, the first, uh, from the first experiment and the second experiment, the difference is, the different, is that different uh, heat rejected, heating capacity rejected to the ground in summer for, for cooling purpose. So can, you can see the temperature response from experiment and from simulation are very, very close for the two cases. And then we uh, study groups, uh, energy pile groups, not just one single or two piles, energy piles. We use the so-called superposition principle to consider different uh, groups energy pile groups, and then uh, we also consider time-based superposition. Uh, this is a, a heat transfer for four piles. The dimensional uh, pile wall temperature can be found from this equation. And uh, this is the internal energy variation of fluid and some of resistance between fluid and out or uh, pile wall for for the t uh, temperature uh, water temperature inlet temperature outlet temperature. Uh, I don't want to introduce all the theory, uh, and then you can see this is dimensional soil temperature distribution at any point on the ground, and then we can find the outlet flu uh, fluid temperature. And then we did some experiment in a lab laboratory together with Tsinghua University of China. And then you can see the simulation is validated as well, verified as well. The excess soil temperature means the temperature increase from steady state temperature. We also publish this in the low low, uh, International of Low Carbon Technologies. Uh, then finally, we develop a software package called Energy Pile Star. We develop energy piles model, heat pump model, and water pump model, and the building model, four models, so that we can consider 
all the uh, situation, real situation. We got the software copyright certificate from National Copyright Administration of China formally uh, to protect our IP. So this is a interface of the software package. So this is a uh, uh, hit pump uh, input, what pump input, input for operational period, uh, one year, for example, or 10 years, 20 years, any time period. Uh, the input of building load, uh, heating load, cooling load, uh, heating load uh, distribution, cooling load distribution, energy pile pro uh, parameters like number, depth, uh, radius, uh, soil temperature, soil thermal conductivity, heat capacity, and so on. Uh, then the heat pump model, uh, I think you're very, uh, most of you are very familiar. Uh, then this uh, uh, building model and water, water pump model, uh, then all the four models, system model. Then we uh, develop the energy pile star software package. The output include inlet and water let temperature at any time from energy piles, soil temperature distribution at any position on the ground, electric power generation, uh, power consumption uh, output or heat pump system, not output, consumption, COP, heating and cooling load, and other parameters. Then you can see this is one of the simulation for different velocity of water advection. You can see uh, we have different effects for different piles. A high velocity means you can blue, you can see the dark is, the color is dark, that means cold. Uh, then, uh, so that we have maximum temperature difference compared with a, a, a steady state temperature. The lower, the better. That means uh, the temperature is cold in summer. So the velocity of water on the ground is very important parameter for the heat transfer on the ground. This is for different layout of the pile. Uh, three times two layout, arrow layout and line layout. Then we have different dimensional soil temperature. I must say similar for the two last two, arrow layout, line layout. It's very easy to understand it, but this one, different pile spacing, then you can see the first one, three meter pile spacing, very hot. Then the maximum dimensional soil temperature is 1.13, very high temperature, then lower COP of the system. And the last one, seven meter pile spacing, so is, uh, the temperature is not very high, so we must consider this effect. Uh, uh, different pile depths as well have different uh, effect. Shorter pile, more heat dispersed from soil surface and lower temperature, better. Uh, in fact, most of the high, uh, buildings, the, uh, the pile depth is not very uh, long, I must say that. So these are all the temperature under different inlet temperature. The working condition is uh, inlet temperature 35 degrees Celsius for cooling in summer. Uh, the velocity in, of water inside the pipeline is 0 0.8 meter per second. And you can, we can find uh, the temperature dis distribution for different, uh, different layout. And this is for uh, different depths, uh, different space of the system. Then we can simulate the outlet fluid temperature on the different heat flux. This shows, uh, you can see the heat you change, what per square meter, not uh, what per meter. Uh, this QH means the heating load. QC means cooling load in summer. The blue one represents the heating load in winter. Uh, the uh, red one uh, in summer. So this is a, uh, uh, Shandong, Beijing area, because in Hong Kong, we don't have the, the heating load, so much heating load. 
in winter. <coughs> you can see for different water flow velocity, we have uh, different effect. Uh, the, for different uh, ratio of the heating and the cooling load. Uh, generally speaking, we need a balanced that's a QH over QC should be equal one. That means the amount of energy inject into the into the ground should be equal or similar to the amount ejected from the ground in winter, so that we have energy balance on the ground. Otherwise, the soil temperature in winter could be very low. The soil temperature in summer could be very high. Then the COP will be will be lower. Uh, for different layout, we also analyze the effect. Then you can see we uh, simulate the performance for a residential building in Beijing. You can see different layout, a different uh, velocity of water flow on the ground, influenced by C page. Of course, the right one, the velocity higher. You can see the velocity is very, very small because underwater advection is very, very slow. Uh, we did some measurement uh, as well. So the left one, the temperature is higher because no velocity, no, no water advection. The right one, the temperature is better. And then this is a detailed uh, result. You can see the COP, uh, the heating COP uh, is getting lower and lower with time. After 10 years, the COP could be less than three. Uh, you see, for different space, different depths. So we must be careful. Uh, the system COP is even lower. So that's why we have the problem, lower, uh, poor, energy performance of the several years operation. Another case study is the hotel application. In northern China, we chose three cities. North, east of China is Harbin, and Changchun, and Shenyang. The temperature, air temperature, you can see in Harbin is cold, very cold. Shenyang and the Changchun, very close. But Shenyang is the south, south, uh, southeast, uh, southern city of these three cities uh, is better. So this uh, monthly average air temperature and the heating load in these three cities, then you can see the simulation results. Uh, the soil heat change in Harbin and uh, uh, you can see more heating load and less cooling load. And uh, in Tangchun and in Xinjiang, it's better, um, better energy balance. Then you can see the COP as this three place of energy power project. Uh, you can see which one is better. Uh, of course, Xinjiang, because the, wa the weather is uh, not very, very cold. Harbin is very cold. so. The COP, if the COP is less than 2.5, I don't think it's economical, uh, even less than three. So we must be careful. So more soil heat extraction in winter, lower soil temperature, of course. So energy balance is very important for ground coupled heat pump with borehole and energy pile. So you can see the Harbin's minimum COP decreased from 2.6 to 1.99, but Shenyang from 3.64 to 2.88, much better. So, so don't always try to use ground coupled system uh, in very cold weather area or very hot weather area, like Harbin, like Hong Kong, Guangdong area in China. The COP could be very low uh, because of the imbalanced uh, heating and the cooling. This is uh, heating the efficiency has three place. Uh, in Xinjiang, is much better. 
And finally, I would like to give a conclusion. The simulation, we have done the simulation experiments of energy piles with groundwater advection. Uh, the seepage effect of groundwater advection must be considered, uh, especially for some mountain area. There must be water flow, uh, even though the flow velocity is very, very small. The soil thermal imbalance problem is very serious, so allowance must be considered at the planning stage. Uh, this is um, one of the main problems for the application of ground couple kit pump system in, Hong in China. The software tool EP Star has been developed. Uh, uh, it's now free, uh, anyone can use it, which can be used to simulate the performance of an energy pile, group pile, ground source heat pump, or sometimes ground couple heat sub, uh, system with C page. For the case study in Haibin, Changchun, and Xinyang, in fact, I have repeat, I have uh, told you the main result. The soil heat extraction capacity in decrease the minimum CO peak decrease from Harbin to Changchun, Shenyang. Shenyang is the best. So, ground couple heat pump system may not be a good renewable energy system for Harbin, for application in Harbin. Very, very low CO peak. And the maximum heating efficiency is also found from the three places. I think that's my uh, presentation. You, I'm happy to answer your questions, if any. Uh, many thanks, Han Xing. Uh, very in informative talk. So now I pass to colleagues. So there's a question, I think, on the chat. One question. Yeah, there are a few questions on the chat. Shall I read them uh, one yeah, out, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. What is the material of the borehole pile, and has this been enhanced in terms of thermal conductivity? Borehole pile, the pile, ah, the pile, foundation pile, this concrete, steel concrete. Now they talk about the tire pipe, the pipes itself. Is it plastic? It's plastic, always plastic, yeah. Okay. Second one, Zani. The other question is Is the software available for download online? Yeah, I just said, uh, yeah, we develop it, although we get we got the IP protection. Yeah, it's free at the moment. We can, uh, anyone need it, we can send a copy to you. We are still developing it. Uh, we want to add more functions. Okay, any other questions, colleague? Any other questions? The other question is, which software does the simulation can be made? Which software? Can the simulation be made? We developed the software we call the EP Star, our software. Okay. 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 Nothing else. Is there any other, other questions? That's no, it. No, that's okay. it. Yeah, so, you can uh, send the email to me. Huh? I will, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Han Xing. Very, very, very interesting talk, very informative. So, now just to conclude, to I'd like to thank you all, all colleagues, to, for attending today this online talk. Of course, I'd like to thank our speakers.